Jim, on the floor of the 2011 INSEC event, uh, we're looking at a number of different simulation and education technologies necessary for getting pilots ready for the airplanes and the aircraft that they have to fly. But one of the things that's interesting is now we're talking about preparing quote unquote pilots for, the, for flying unmanned vehicles. And one of the biggest monsters of all, and one that's just been deployed, is KMAX. KMAX is a monstrous rotorcraft with a phenomenal lifting capability. You got a job ahead of you on this one, don't you? Actually, this one has been very straightforward. As you're well aware, the KMAX program is designed to enhance the safety of our troops. Delivering cargo more to the front lines is very expensive and very dangerous. So by airlifting it, you're able to save cost, time, and injuries to our troops, which is very, very important to all of us. So from this, this is a rapid deployment capability. Uh, so it's a prototype unit. So in some ways, you're not going through all the bells and whistles that you would otherwise do. You're taking a hand-select group of, of, of people that are going to both train and then deploy with that unit. And so a little bit more selective with that. And we're going, we're taking some experienced unmanned aircraft operators, and we're bringing them into that community because of the nature of the program. So what we did is develop a very rudimentary simulator a few weeks of classroom training, a few weeks of hand-on simulation training, a few weeks of OJT, and ready to go. When you bring somebody in to take on uh, the command, per se, of an aircraft like this, now remotely, you're able to pretty much dovetail the interface to what they're going to be using anyway, so you have that one area in particular, simplicity. But how do you start from some, what do you start with, how do you bring somebody through, and how do you qualify somebody for being able to do cargo drops in the middle of god-awful Afghanistan? <laughs> The key here is, is to be able to start with experienced unmanned aircraft operators so they understand the basics of how they want to operate. They certainly have the airmanship skills. So now you're teaching them the aircraft specific skills and going through there. Then now it's the con ops, like I said, and about half the curriculum is the con ops of how and when and where you're going to be able to deliver this cargo, what are the restrictions, and doing that. So that's something you work closely with the customer and you do that well before you're ready to deliver the training. And again, these things lead up through the development of the aircraft, the proving of the aircraft itself as you're developing those with the customer set to ensure that they're comfortable with the con ops. Again, we don't do this in, in a vacuum. We do this in concert with our customers. Partnerships is the, is the only way to succeed, especially when you're doing something in a rapid prototyping environment. What are you learning right now? What kind of feedback are you getting from the field? You've got two of these deployed at the moment? They're in the process of being deployed. They're in route right now. But from the demonstration work, I'd say is, is it was just world class. That the customer made a very quick decision after the very, very successful demonstration, delivering a certain set of requirements, how many pounds, over how much distance, over such a period of time can you deliver. And so after exceeding that requirement day after day after day during the trial runs, the customer said, let's get this over there, let's get this in the hands of the troops, and let them not only take what we delivered them, but they will innovate as they always do uh, over there. You know, we were out there, we proved this first, we're over there first, so I say we're going very, very well right now with this very proven vehicle, very successful vehicle. Now, obviously, an aircraft like KMAX has tremendous potential from here on out. How are you looking at, well, how are you shaping the mission, and is the training aspect of this producing any kind of feedback from you on how you can uh, push the mission forward? Well, there's no question. Training and operational, you know, that's a continuous loop of learning, you know, back and forth. And if you're not sharing those lessons learned, then you're not really, you know, fulfilling your job as a training integrator. So we're learning things right now. Like I said, we haven't really deployed yet in Afghanistan. That's in process right now. So that loop will continue to go do. What we're seeing is, is you know, we've seen in just the initial training, some of the sensors that are on board, what are the things that they could do with those sensors other than deliver the cargo. And we'll let the military make those evaluations as far as where they want to take that additional capability forward in the future. The amount of cost savings in this has just got to be absolutely phenomenal. Are you getting a feel at this point for just what this is really bringing to the field? Jim, to be candid, I don't have any data on that, and I would look to the Marine Corps to provide that kind of data. You highlighted one aspect of it, which is the manned versus the unmanned vehicle and the infrastructure that requires. The other real driver on this is the cost of where the IEDs are on the roads, the convoys, the amount of infrastructure it takes to deliver a pound of goods out towards our front lines. There's well, three costs. Cost of the airplane, there's the cost of the convoy, and then, of course, the reduced threat of the IEDs because you're flying over them instead of having to drive through them. And those are the real savings and the benefits of this program. Well, it's an amazing concept. We're certainly looking forward to getting more information as this mission develops, and especially once it builds some operational experience. I hope we'll have a chance to get back to you then and uh, talk to you a little bit about what you've learned and how that is being detailed into the training protocols you're developing for this machine. Look forward to that. Again, looking forward to success and supporting our troops in Afghanistan. Thank you, sir.
Aero TV is brought to you by the DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90.